here we go hopefully this works okay and yeah we're here today I'm going to be reviewing Jump Force on the PS4 uh, as you can see that it says Jump Force this is a basically a crossover game between multiple of the Shonen Jump franchises there's my character I've created and as you can see I'm just going to create a new one here you can have both male and female they're the types you get to pick at the beginning A, B, C and what these do is that's basically if I'm right if that's a martial artist type A martial art, uh, yeah that's Goku uh, that's Luffy and I think that one's Naruto and basically all they do is they just change the moves you get at the beginning I'll go body see you can make them tall small and stuff like that which is cool and basically yeah uh, it's not very in-depth the character creator as you can see here And then you go back, you can do eyebrows, ears, you can change the nose. But as you notice there, that you don't really start with any outfits. And then when we go back over to the one I created earlier. So you can go online or you can go offline. I'm going to go offline for the purpose of this. Just because it's a lot more predictable what you're going to see in the, off in the online offline version. The online version is exactly the same. But the online version also has more a lot more people which is fine but I don't want a lot of people at the moment while I'm doing this because this is a live stream review and the reason I'm doing this live stream review normally I do a lot of reviews and sometimes I edit the footage and stuff but this one there's so many blocked scenes and all the other stuff I can't really do that because I would have to s choose between sacrificing the cutscenes or sacrificing gameplay or something like that and this way I can do gameplay I can just talk about the cutscenes and stuff which is fine as you can see there there's a leaderboard that, that's used for offline but as you can see this is a giant hub and this is my character which when I go here you can see that during the game you actually earn money and points and stuff and what that points and stuff does is it helps you essentially you can buy clothing or you can buy points and stuff like I can put jackets on these are the ones I've unlocked or not unlocked these are the ones I purchased or you start with a couple and that was a pre-order bonus which I use I also bought that one but I much prefer that like I bought as you can see I think it's under accessory that I bought the mask which is which is cool you can add stockings and stuff which I don't do and yeah so you can go to each one of the vendors and I'll show you those in a sec and with the vendors and stuff you can actually purchase all the stuff for your created character you can also essentially you got various moves you can do 
with your created character. Which is cool, and you can use whichever moves you particularly want to use. Missions, which I'm not going to do any story missions because I know that there's cutscenes. Which that's slightly annoying, that's a negative at the moment. Every cutscene, the slightest cutscene, the second you get one, you instantly get a thing come up. Oh, yeah. oh it's a blocked scene, and it's like, oh, why? Why is it a blocked scene? Why is every one of them a blocked scene? Even ones where they're just standing there, it's text based. It's still a blocked scene. It's silly. But yeah, you can buy items, ability skills, abilities, outfits. Like I said, each vendor has different stuff. This is the ones available at this vendor. And then accessories, you got like the wigs. And obviously like swords and stuff, which is cool. Abilities. These are the abilities, and you can set them a franchise if you want to, or you can just all and just go down, which is cool. And as you can see there, you get to get a preview of what they look like. Which that's pretty cool. But you also unlock moves, moves you actually do unlock by doing missions and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, the, there's three areas, you get to pick a team, they don't really affect much, but I'm on team A, which is Goku's team, as you can see there. And there's also a Naruto team and a One Piece team, basically. Well, a Luffy lad and a Naruto one, I should say, because... Like, the Naruto team actually has Trunks from Dragon Ball on there. So, obviously, characters in different series is, are on different teams, are, are on the same series, are on different teams, which, that's pretty cool. And, as I mentioned, each place has a different, there's a vendor inside the main hub, too. And, here we are, this is the Naruto area, as you can see, this one also has an area. And, if I go over to... Is that the... Oh no, that's the upgrade desk. There's the shop. And like I mentioned before, I'm just doing this, this one quickly. Outfits, as you can see. See, so yeah, it has different ones available to it. If you want to buy them here. And obviously the one people with the Luffy Outlet area has one and stuff. And each one of these areas are pretty cool. And something else you can do in the hub, you can press down and you can use any of these. I normally use this, which was the pre-order bonus. That was me moving the camera, because I was trying to get in front of it, but I'll do that in a sec. There we go, see? The small pod, which is Freezer's spaceship, or Freezer's little pod he has in Dragon Ball. We do like that. And then, over here, you can each one of these areas is theme on the, based on the hero that's leading the team, which is cool. And yeah, they're the, they're the basic stuff at the moment, but you can turn it off anytime. Then you go over to those desks over, that one over there is the missions, so you can get basic missions. And you can get offline, and you can get battles on and offline. The reason, one of the reasons I went offline for this review is normally there's people queuing all the way around here doing these mission doing missions and as a result it re gets really a a finicky at times to click on the right one but missions see the splinter different ones there's the tutorial missions as you can see there key missions these are the story missions and now these ones are free, I can do on the here and you'll see them but you get stuff like this see I haven't done that one yet 
So, but each one of these do have different objectives, as you can see when I'm scrolling through. Some of them you need a certain character on your team, like that one, say, and some of these you don't. I'll try the mission, might as well. Worst comes to worst, because I'm concentrating on this, I might get my ass kicked, but that's cool. Oh, okay, it's making me have him on my team. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to go with my character. And I'm going to go with Rukia. And there you go, you can see, you can see here, basic, now there is one issue which I'll cut in, which you'll notice when we're playing this now, and that's one thing the computer does, it just irritates me. And that is, now one thing that's worth noticing, you'll notice the load times aren't that bad now. They were atrocious at first, but it has been patched. At the time of this review, it's been patched, so that's no longer a negative, so yay. And as you can see, so as you can see, it loads when you get the little intro at the beginning. And yeah, there is no English dub, so it's all in Japanese. So that's something worth noting. And yeah, you can swap your character. See, this is the thing the computer does that annoys me. It just spends the whole time blocking. And when the computer starts to just block like that, it gets really irritating. Now one thing I noticed is they're more susceptible to that move than they are others, which then means you end up being cheap just to essentially out-cheap the computer. And yeah, my character clearly has mostly Dragon Ball Z moves. And as you can see, around the edge of the characters, there is a damage system. Or a damage hub. Which then allows you to pull off ultimate moves and transform, that's like an ultimate move. And boom! Now something that's odd, as you notice, this is like a two-part mission. Oh, I'm not going to end well. But, uh, as you can see, this is like a two-part mission. Story missions are only one part, uh, only one round, I should say. Oops, I think I swapped to him by mistake. And you see what I mean? The computer just spends a lot of time just blocking. So it becomes almost irritating and sometimes they can block and perfectly know every time when to unblock and it's like, oh come on. And I don't mind if the computer dodges or blocks, I just don't want them to only block. Because then it becomes an issue. Oh, 
<laughs> and as you saw during the battle, there is damage and stuff that comes on, which is cool. I don't think I will have gotten high marks on this one. There's some I've got an S on, some I've gotten B's on and stuff, but that's fine. But there you got to see the principle almost of the, of the fighting system. But like I said, that com the computer blocking does get irritating fast. Ah, there you go, I got B on that one. And yeah, there we go. And with those missions, in case people are wondering, as you can see there on three missions, I'll go easy. So yeah, uh, just because they're, they're the ones I've got unlocked at the moment, but yeah. So you can see there, yeah you can see my points and stuff, but you can also see there like under items, there are a list of stuff you get if you beat the mission. Which is cool, so they're, they're like unlocks and stuff, so it's worth checking them if there's a particular thing you're looking for. And when you go here, you got all these options. I'm going to go computer v computer, that way I can keep talking while it's going. I'm not going to use my creative character, so I'm going to turn it off. It just turns them off. Uh, let, yeah, let's see what the computer can do on maximum. I'm just curious about that too. I will do a couple of these as I'm talking. So let's go team Goku, Vegeta, And I'm going to put him against. I would put him against. Yeah, why not? <laughs> and that right there that I just did there is proof that some franchises have way more characters than others. Like, I like Dragon Ball, as people know, hence my character, and hence on this very channel. You'll see all the Dragon Ball stuff and all that. But, I don't like that aspect of it, where essentially what they do is Dragon Ball's got like six characters, but then you, you go over to other stuff like, I don't know, Yu Gi Oh! and it's got like one. And you're like, oh, come on, surely that, that you could have given Dragon Ball like three or four and given other franchises two. Same with Naruto and One Piece having more. And yeah, I don't know if you'll see it during this battle, hopefully you do, but there is some there is transformations when you get maximum damage to you when you when you do, when you do, when you got damage to you half a round one round and you can do an ultimate. Two round and you can do an ultimate, but you can also do a trans like a full awakened state. And those two gauges do affect transformations and stuff on some characters, and not all characters have transformations. Like, Goku and Vegeta can go Super Saiyan, or if it's on maximum, they can go Super Saiyan Blue, or Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. I was curious what the, what the computer was going to do, because it's the computer of the computer. Which means we're actually seeing it. Are we seeing them just block against each other? No, okay, they are fighting. And yeah, as you can see that each one of these is it does look beautiful. I wish I could show you the cutscenes because the can the cutscenes do look gorgeous. Like the opening cinematic, you get to see Freezer go you want to do like a finger blast through all the buildings, and it's like devastating. You're like, oh my god, that's so cool. And you get to see Light from Death Note, he's in the cutscenes, which is cool, and he's playing his own little game, and I'm curious what he's up to. And as well as that, there's like a story unfolding about why there's these creatures called the Venoms that keep attacking. One issue with the story mode that some people may have is 
it's focused entirely on your creator fighter. And basically, because it's... Uh, and there you go, he transformed into Super Saiyan, which his finishing move can make him do as well. But yeah, basically, it's focused on your creator fighter, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Only because it's meant to be a game celebrating 50 years of Shonen Jump and all that. And it's meant to be celebrating all the franchises crossing over for the for, uh, crossing over for the game, like we had J Star's Victory First and all that. And the focus for the story is on your creator guy mostly. Which, while there is some cool style stories you get, like there was a cool one where every character, like Trunks, you see there, and Ichigo and stuff with a sword, all ma all the characters with swords met, and you're like, oh my god, that's so cool. Which that was just a that was a cool moment, and there was like a um, there was a fight between uh, the guy from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, I think it was, and Yugi or Yami, whatever he's called from Yu-Gi-Oh, which that's cool, and they were both summoning this guy, these little people to fight, which that's fun. And in fact, I might actually do that fight on here in a sec after this one, just to prove how cool it is. But yeah. But as you can see, like you can see that trunks transform. But yeah, the story, the, the story mode's cool. The focus on the creator character, like I said, because it's supposed to be for the anniversary of the game. Eh, it's debatable if that's good or not because you could argue it's celebrating the game still by making it so it shows how much you love these franchises by what you composite into them. But one other thing I didn't like about the story mode is sometimes after you have a cutscene, it just the cutscene ends, and that's cool. Then it tells you, <laughs> oh come on. You, you could have won that, but yeah, basically, then it tells you nothing, and you're left having to go to each area to find out to what triggers the cutscene, which area tr triggers the next cutscene for some of the story modes to know where to go, which, uh, I don't like that. I wish it told you, just flat out told you, okay go to area A or area B or something like that. But it'd just be a lot more easier to navigate and easier to find, which, but that's fine. Now logging in online does give you a bonus. I make sure to log in once a day because you do get extra gems and stuff. And what they're used for is for upgrading skills and points. And essentially with the skills and points when they upgrade them fully, you can upgrade like of the attack thing on your moves or you can give or you can upgrade like abilities or passives that you have that might upgrade certain statistics or certain elements that you want to increase which is cool and it's handy so and obviously the harder the game becomes like later on in the game the more you want to do that so as you can see that at least in my opinion there is some real depth to the game and the fighting is smooth and I, I like how it looks. It looks great. I, I love how it looks. I love how it plays. There's a couple of little drawbacks here and there, like depending on who you are. Like some people will not like the fact there is no dub. Personally, I would have preferred a dub, but I'm not going to hold it against the game either because I understand why it doesn't have one. Because getting the license for all the different studios that have the right to do the dub would probably mean the game wouldn't make a profit, maybe. But the other, the other thing of the focus on the creator of fighter, and you also have the one of the other elements is the fact every cutscene is a blocked scene, which I, I don't think it should be. And. As you can see here, there is a roster. There is three exclusive new characters, but you don't get to see them at the moment. But here's, as you can see, there is a big roster here.
See, some franchises do have more than one person. Ironically, Bleach has four. And you do get to have characters from everything. So for, for the next one, next round while I'm talking, I'm going to go with Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, well, Yami, I think it was. Was that Yami? Yeah, a Yugi on, on this one, but it's technically Yami because it's that Pharaoh form. Put him in here. And. No, I'm, I'm gonna go random. Random for all three. Wait a minute, I didn't want to go random for all three. First one was I needed I needed somebody a particular person but I can't remember. I think it was him. Yeah. I'll go random. Cause that's the, literally the fight I just told you guys I was gonna do. As you can see there's lots of locations here. I would go random but I don't wanna go to go on Namek again because I just did that one to show off the Dragon Ball stuff. I'm gonna go with Yeah sure that's a that's a cool place. But yeah. Now as you can see, you you got there's different degrees for how what moves you can do. Like certain moves require two bars of energy, some require only one. A lot of them require only one to be fair. And you do have the abilities at any given time to obviously to swap characters. You can also hold the button that swaps characters and you can, they can come in for an assist. As they're all beating you up, or if you've got a max gauge as well, as you're doing a combo, if you press the right stick you get a team combo, which is cool. And see, I chose these ones because they're, they're slightly unique, these two. And it's fun seeing them go against each other because it keeps bringing out little people to fight to fight that fight for them. And some stages do have areas where you can knock them through various stuff, like some of the cities have them, and I've seen them. I don't know if all of them do. <laughs> See, uh, like I said, there's so many good people. Which I, I like that, that it makes them a little bit more unique to some of the other fighters. Which that's kind of cool. And like I said, the whole thing does look incredible, I think. Other people may disagree on that, some people don't like the look. But I kind of like this. That, see, and some of the combos are just ridiculously crazy. Like that. Now, one thing this game doesn't do, uh, enough of, I personally like the roster, some don't. Uh, some don't, mainly for the reason I mentioned, which was a negative of too many. Uh, some franchises are more than others. The other element is, they got rid of a load of the fun characters. Like, uh, in the last one, J Star's Victory. Uh, J Star's Victory Plus, whatever it was called. There was a load of comic relief characters, and they were fun to play as, to be fair. <coughs> this one doesn't really have any comic relief characters. It has some characters that are more f that are fun, but let's face it, they're still played more for serious than they are for laughs a lot of times. But some of the interactions are cool. Which I, I do like some of the interactions. Like there was a scene where Light meets Goku and Goku thinks oh, I can trust him and starts telling him all about the Dragon Balls when he asks about making a wish. And I'm like, oh don't do it Goku. Now I haven't finished the story mode yet so I don't know if that's going to come back to bite everyone in the ass but as you can see this is, I still think this is a pretty solid game. 
And there's lots of franchises in this game for everyone to look at, and different people have different favourites. Like I said, yes, I favour the, dra the Dragon Ball one, that is my favourite anime of all time. But, different people may have different franchises they favour, which is cool. And it's cool just seeing them all come together and have a little celebration. And as you can see with, with, the, with the combat, it's fast paced. It is pretty good. It is pretty awesome. It's easy to do, but it's all like I said, it's also got the depth of the combos and all the other stuff. The only negative is uh, when the, the computer, like I mentioned, just keeps blocking, they become unfun. But watching the computer view computer like this, which this is my first time doing that, it, it's actually pretty fun. I'm enjoying seeing them hit, hit all the stuff. And that looks cool! Boom! Now this will be available on YouTube. It's a high YouTube at the same time. And I was doing it, like I said, I did the live one because I wanted to get this up. But I wanted to not have to spend ages editing through all the blocked scenes and having to photoshop it. Well, not photoshop, having to edit in like me filming it with a camera on the cutscenes because I'm like, no. And I just figured the live review now and again for some games, it's pretty cool. And I'm going to be doing more live reviews in the future. Because it's, they're easy to do, I can stream and I can just send them to you, and I can send it to YouTube. And I can get this out the way. And there we have it. See, you can even save replays to watch later. And yeah. And there we have it. We have Jump Force on the PS4. Which, yeah, like I said, overall, my final thoughts, like I said, it, solid gameplay. I like, the, I like the look of it, the graphics. I'm enjoying the story. And I'm enjoying the roster and stuff like that. So, overall, I'm going to give it a thumb up. I, I definitely give this a thumb up. You should definitely go watch it. Or oh, not watch it. You should definitely... If you like the franchises in it or more than one I would highly recommend it if you only like one of them it's probably not gonna be worth it and this was one of the other shops I was telling you about just because I like what's in this one when you go to tops at the very bottom you can have a cell outfit or a frog outfit That's, it's fun but yeah and Like I said, there is some real depth to it. Now that's something that's a negative, what you keep seeing there. It's circle to exit out of stuff, but it's also circle to interact with it. I don't like that. But as you can see here, there's various poses you can do. Fusion, yeah. I'm still to get. I start to check whether or not doing two of those at the same time would actually fuse your characters. I'm guessing no. <laughs> I don't think it would, but it would, be, it would be a dream if it did. But yeah. Also, when you create a new character, they do have access to all the stuff this character's gotten unlocked. So you don't have to start from from scratch. You can just make a new character and go straight into the story mode which is pretty cool and yeah it's worth checking out like I said there is some flaws it's not for everyone some people will not like the game some people will not like arena fighters some people won't like that their, their favorite franchise didn't get all the roster it's supposed to but I, I enjoy it for what it is and yeah so I'm going to say thank you for joining us and goodbye. Uh, buy this game and uh, like I said, buy, I'd recommend buying this game or at least giving it a rent.